Sir Maurice Vincent Wilkes FRS, Freen, DFBCS was a British computer scientist credited with several important developments in computing. At the time of his death, Wilkes was an emeritus professor of the University of Cambridge. Early life, education, and military service, Wilkes was born in Dudley, Worcestershire, England and grew up in Stourbridge, West Midlands, England, where his father worked on the estate of the Earl of Dudley. He was educated at King Edward VI College, Stourbridge and during his school years he was introduced to amateur radio by his chemistry teacher. He went on to read the mathematical tripos at St John's College, Cambridge from 1931 to Euro 34, continuing to complete a PhD in physics on the topic of radio propagation of very long radio waves in the ionosphere in 1936. He was appointed to a junior faculty position of the University of Cambridge through which he was involved in the establishment of a computing laboratory. He was called up for military service during World War II and worked on radar at the telecommunications research establishment, and in operational research. Research and career. Equals initiation into electronic computing equals, in 1945. Wilkes was appointed as the second director of the University of Cambridge Mathematical Laboratory. The Cambridge Laboratory initially had many different computing devices, including a differential analyzer. One day Leslie Cumry visited Wilkes and lent him a copy of John von Neumann's pre-press description of the EDVAC, a successor to the ENIAC under construction by Presbereckert and John Morchley at the Moore School of Electrical Engineering. He had to read it overnight because he had to return it and no photocopy facilities existed. He decided immediately that the document described the logical design of future computing machines, and that he wanted to be involved in the design and construction of such machines. In August 1946 Wilkes traveled by ship to the United States to enroll in the Moore School Lectures, of which he was only able to attend the final two weeks because of various travel delays equals EDSAC equals. Since his laboratory had its own funding, he was immediately able to start work on a small practical machine, the EDSAC, once back at Cambridge. He decided that his mandate was not to invent a better computer, but simply to make one available to the university. Therefore his approach was relentlessly practical. He used only proven methods for constructing each part of the computer. The resulting computer was slower and smaller than other planned contemporary computers. However, his laboratory's computer was the first practical stored program computer to be completed, and operated successfully from May 1949. Equals other computing developments equals, in 1951, he developed the concept of microprogramming from the realization that the central processing unit of a computer could be controlled by a miniature, highly specialized computer program in high-speed ROM. This concept greatly simplified CPU development. Microprogramming was first described at the University of Manchester Computer Inaugural Conference in 1951, then published in expanded form in IEEE Spectrum in 1955. This concept was implemented for the first time in EDSAC2, which also used multiple identical bit slices to simplify design. Interchangeable, replaceable tube assemblies were used for each bit of the processor. The next computer for his laboratory was the Titan, a joint venture with Ferranti Limited begun in 1963. It eventually supported the UK's first time sharing system and provided wider access to computing resources in the university, including time shared graphic systems for mechanical CAD. A notable design feature of the Titan's operating system was that it provided controlled access based on the identity of the program, as well as or instead of, the identity of the user. It introduced the password encryption system used later by Unix. Its programming system also had an early version control system. Wilkes is also credited with the idea of symbolic labels, macros and subroutine libraries. These are fundamental developments that made programming much easier and paved the way for high-level programming languages. Later, Wilkes worked on an early time-sharing systems and distributed computing. Toward the end of the 1960s, Wilkes also became interested in capability-based computing, and the laboratory assembled a unique computer, the Cambridge CAP. 
In 1974 Wilkes encountered a Swiss data network that used a ring topology to allocate time on the network. The laboratory initially used a prototype to share peripherals. Eventually, commercial partnerships were formed, and similar technology became widely available in England. Awards, honors and leadership, Wilkes received a number of distinctions, he was a Knight Bachelor, Distinguished Fellow of the British Computer Society, a Fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering and was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1956. He was a founder member of the British Computer Society and its first president. Wilkes received the Turing Award in 1967, with the following citation, Professor Wilkes is best known as the builder and designer of the EDSAC, the first computer with an internally stored program. Built in 1949, the EDSAC used a mercury delay line memory. He is also known as the author, with Wheeler and Gill, of a volume on preparation of programs for electronic digital computers in 1951, in which program libraries were effectively introduced. In 1968 he received the Harry H. Good Memorial Award, with the following citation, for his many original achievements in the computer field, both in engineering and software and for his contributions to the growth of professional society activities and to international cooperation among computer professionals. In 1972 Morris Wilkes was awarded an honorary Doctor of Science by Newcastle University. In 1980 he retired from his professorships and post as the head of the laboratory and joined the Central Engineering Staff of Digital Equipment Corporation in Maynard, Massachusetts, USA. He was awarded the Faraday Medal by the Institution of Electrical Engineers in 1981. The Morris Wilkes Award, awarded annually for an outstanding contribution to computer architecture made by a young computer scientist or engineer, is named after him. In 1986, he returned to England, and became a member of Olivetti's Research Strategy Board. In 1987, he was awarded an honorary degree by the University of Bath. In 1993 Wilkes was presented, by Cambridge University, with an honorary Doctor of Science degree. In 1994 he was inducted as a Fellow of the Association for Computing Machinery. He was awarded the Mountbatten Medal in 1997 and in 2000 presented the inaugural Pinkerton Lecture. He was knighted in the 2000 New Year Honours List. In 2001, he was inducted as a Fellow of the Computer History Museum for his contributions to computer technology, including early machine design, microprogramming, and the Cambridge Ring Network. In 2002, Wilkes moved back to the Computer Laboratory, University of Cambridge, as an emeritus professor. In his memoirs Wilkes wrote, I well remember when this realization first came on me with full force. The EDSAC was on the top floor of the building and the tape punching and editing equipment one floor below. It was on one of my journeys between the EDSAC room and the punching equipment that hesitating at the angles of stairs the realization came over me with full force that a good part of the remainder of my life was going to be spent in finding errors in my own programs. Personal Life Wilkes married Nina Twyman in 1947 who died in 2008. He died in November 2010 and was survived by his son, Anthony, and two daughters, Margaret and Helen. References External links, Oral History Interview with David J. Wheeler, Charles Babbage Institute, University of Minnesota. Wheeler was a research student under Wilkes at the University Mathematical Laboratory at Cambridge from 1948 to Euro 51. Wheeler discusses the EDSAC project. The influence of EDSAC on the ILLIAC, the ORDVAC, and the IBM 701 computers, as well as visits to Cambridge by Douglas Hartree, Nelson Blackman, Peter Nauer, Ard van Weijgarden, Arthur van der Poel, Friedrich Bauer, and Louis Kufignal. Listen to an oral history interview with Maurice Wilkes a Euro recorded in June 2010 for an oral history of British science at the British Library.